Sam walked straight to his hotel room window and smiled as he took in the view of the street outside. Although he traveled annually to Cuba for business for the past few years, every visit still excited him. Sam was a nobody back home, but everyone treated him like a king here. Sam had a business meeting lined up for lunch the next day. That meant tonight was free for partying and Sam knew all the best nightclubs in the area. The bartender offered him his first drink on the house when he arrived at his favorite one. Sam danced and drank and a few hours later he returned to his hotel room. Sam's delight faded when he turned on the light. Somebody had piled his clothes on the bed and his suitcase lay on the floor. The suitcase was shut and jerked across the floor as if alive. Sam was circling his suitcase. He gently kicked it and leaped back in fright when a child cried out. He quickly opened the suitcase and gasped when he saw a toddler curled up inside. This has got to be someone's idea of a joke, Sam muttered. Then he saw none. I have worked as a maid in this hotel for many years so you should remember me, Sam. We met one night two years ago and I fell pregnant. I thought I could raise our daughter alone, but I was wrong. She deserves more than what I can give her, so I'm leaving her with you. Her name is Dunya. Please take good care of her, Papa. No freaking way! Sam dropped the note and skidded backward away from the child in his suitcase. He couldn't be a father. He didn't want to be a father. Coming to Cuba was the highlight of his year, a time to let loose and have fun. This wasn't it. The toddler reached out to Sam, fell over the edge of the suitcase and burst into tears. Sam stared at her in shock. It's okay, little beauty, or phew. Sam leaned back and flapped a hand in front of his face. You're a stinky little lady. Something very bad's happened in that diaper. Sam took the baby with him to buy diapers and formula. He woke up the following day when Dunya started pulling his hair. Stop that! Sam pried her chubby fingers off his hair. Immediately, Dunya's giggles turned to heartbroken sobs. I'm sorry, please stop crying. Sam pulled a funny face at the child. Look, Dunya, don't I look silly? Dunya turned red in the face as she cried even harder than before. Tears poured down her chubby little cheeks and in desperation, Sam lifted her into his arms and started singing a nursery rhyme he'd learned as a child. Dunya's little fingers immediately went back into his hair. Sam couldn't take this much longer. He set Dunya down on the bed and gave her a stuffed toy he'd found when he went shopping the evening before. Then he rushed downstairs to the front desk. Where's the maid with a toddler daughter named Dunya? Sam demanded. I need to see her immediately. Ah, Mr. Sam. The lady behind the desk grinned at him. I'm not sure who you mean. Uh, we have several cleaners on staff. Sam pulled out his wallet and removed a few bills. Maybe this will help you think. Okay, I think I can help you. The woman took the money from Sam's hand. Alyssa had a little girl. I think her name was Dunya. She held out her hand for more money. Alyssa doesn't work here anymore, but I might know what happened to her. Sam clenched his jaw and gave the woman more money. That's all I'm giving you. Now tell me where Alyssa is. She said she was going to the US to become a designer. Her cousin lives in Tampa and promised to help her with immigration. She's left the country? Panic washed over Sam. Returning the child to her mother would be more challenging than he thought. He pulled out his phone and was about to search for the next flight to Tampa when an alarm sounded on his phone. He'd forgotten about his business meeting. I need you to get me a babysitter and send them up to my room, Sam said as he rushed away. Dunya was lying on the floor crying when Sam returned to his room. He lifted her and choked when he smelled her diaper. I don't have time for this, Sam cried as he set Dunya down to change her diaper. I don't even know what I'm doing. Sam was late for his meeting. He returned to the hotel room in a terrible mood. After he paid the babysitter and saw her out, he lifted Dunya and looked her in the eyes. You're going back to your mother, Missy, Sam said. I don't care if I have to pay child maintenance for the rest of my life. I can't look after you anymore. Dunya babbled some nonsense and smiled at Sam. She was a cute kid and part of him felt proud to have such a sweet daughter, but it was far too much work. Dunya would be way better off with her mother. Sam put the supplies he'd bought for Dunya into a shopping bag and went downstairs. He paid the woman at reception even more money to find out the address for Alyssa's sister in Tampa and had written it on a piece of paper. He pinned the paper to Dunya's shirt while the cab drove them to the airport. I'd like to buy a plane ticket to Tampa, Florida for my child. Sam set Dunya down to the ticket counter. Her mother is expecting her and will pick her up at the airport, Sam lied. The man behind the counter arched his eyebrows. Sir, we can't allow a child this young to travel alone. If you give me you and your daughter's documents and the consent form, I'll book tickets for both of you. Sam cleared his throat. Consent form? Yes, sir, the man replied, his eyes narrowing suspiciously. You can't travel to the US with your daughter unless you have a consent form signed by your mother giving you permission to do so. Sam groaned. He just wanted his entire weird experience to be over now. As he'd done so many times before, Sam solved his problem by reaching for his wallet. I'm sure you can make an exception this once. Sam started peeling off peso notes from the stack in his wallet. Like I said, her mother's waiting for them in Tampa, so... Are you trying to bribe me, sir? The ticket agent set his hands on his hips. You expect me to break laws and risk my job for a few hundred peso? I'm calling security. No! Sam reached across the counter, but the ticket agent had already signaled the security guards. They seemed to appear out of nowhere, tough-looking men and women who pressed through the crowd, and Sam panicked. He lifted Dunya into his arms and ran. 
An alarm sounded somewhere overhead and the guard shouted behind him, but Sam didn't stop. He sprinted through the airport and out on the street. Sam tried to return to his hotel room, but there was police car parked outside, so he kept walking. He didn't know where to go, but his aimless wandering brought him to the beach just as the sun set. Dunya had wailed for a while, but now she was asleep and felt heavy in his arms. Sam sat beside a low dune near one of the taverns lining the shore and set Dunya down on the sand beside him. This is all your fault, Sam muttered to the child. If it wasn't for you… Sam put his head in his hands. It wasn't Dunya's fault her mother left her. He couldn't even blame Alyssa now that he knew how difficult it was to care for a child alone. She'd sent in her letter that she wanted a better life for herself and her child, their child. Sam smoothed Dunya's hair off her forehead. What right did he have to criticize anyone after how he treated his daughter up to now? Sam, is that you? Sam looked up at the stocky man walking across the sand toward him. It took him a moment to recognize the man as the owner of one of the nearby taverns. Jorge? Of course. The man's grin faded when he noticed Dunya sleeping beside him. What are you doing here with this child? Sam broke down and told Jorge everything. When he finished speaking, Jorge bent down and gently lifted Dunya into his arms. Come inside, Jorge said. You have many troubles, Sam, but I can help you. Jorge offered Sam a place to stay while he figured out what he wanted to do next. When Sam's money ran out a week later, Jorge offered him a job in his tavern. Sam worked hard to provide for himself and Dunya. Several times he went to his local embassy to try to sort out the mess his life had become, but fear stopped him before he reached the entrance. He didn't know how much trouble he was in after the incident at the airport, and he was terrified the authorities would take Dunya away from him. After that night on the beach, Sam realized he was responsible for taking care of Dunya. It didn't take long before he realized he loved his daughter. The thought of those first few days when he tried to get rid of her filled Sam with shame and he was determined to make up for it. Jorge was a rock for Sam during those first few weeks. Since Jorge had three children, he could show Sam how to care for Dunya. It was difficult, especially on the nights when Dunya didn't sleep, but it all seemed worthwhile when she first looked up at Sam and called him Papa. That's right, Sam grinned and lifted Dunya into his arms. I'm Papa and you little Dunya are the best thing that's ever happened to me. A few years later, Sam organized a small party to celebrate Dunya's birthday. He wasn't sure of the exact date, but had estimated it was sometime in February. Sam bought a cake from a local pastry shop and decorated their home with streamers he made himself. After breakfast, Sam put a blindfold on Dunya and led her down to the beach for a special surprise. Is it a dolphin? Dunya asked as they walked. Or a whale? Sam laughed. Dunya was already out of breath, so he lifted her onto his shoulders. No, sweetheart, but I hope you'll like it very much. Dunya squealed with excitement when she saw the jet ski Sam had loaned from Jorge. Sam slowly rode around with Dunya, but she insisted he go faster. He sped up and couldn't stop himself from smiling as he listened to his daughter's delighted shrieks as they skimmed over the water. Sam decided to give Dunya one last treat as they headed in. He sped up the crest of a wave. He and Dunya hung in the air for a moment, but then they crashed down into the water. Dunya's cry of delight was abruptly cut short as she thudded against his back. You okay, sweetheart? Sam turned just in time to see his daughter fall off the back of the jet ski. Sam drove into the water. He found Dunya and brought her to the surface, but she wasn't breathing. No, oh god, no! Sam clambered back onto the jet ski with his daughter. She lay limply in his arms as he raced back to the shore. The next few hours passed in a daze as Sam performed CPR on his daughter while waiting for the paramedics, held her limp hand in the back of the ambulance and paced in the hospital hallway while the doctors treated Dunya. He couldn't stop thinking about how cold and limp Dunya had felt in his arms. What if he'd been too late if she was gone forever? Sam sank into a chair and began to sob. A few minutes later, he felt a hand on his shoulder and looked up. The doctor who'd taken Dunya away to treat her was standing over him with a serious expression. Oh god, she's gone, isn't she? Sam rose and gripped the lapels of the doctor's coat. I just wanted her to have a nice birthday and never meant for this to kill her. Your daughter's alive, sir, the doctor replied, but her condition's very serious. During our examination, we discovered that your daughter has health issues affecting her lungs. This makes it difficult for her body to recover from today's incident. Sam couldn't believe what he was hearing. He recalled all the times he'd heard Dunya coughing at night or seen her struggle to catch her breath during a game with the other kids in the neighborhood. He never thought something might be wrong with her, but he now cursed himself for ignoring those signs. The more the doctor spoke, the bleaker Dunya's future seemed. She'd need regular oxygen treatments, lung function tests, and even regular intravenous therapy. Will this cure her? Sam asked. The doctor frowned. Unfortunately not, but it'll help her live a normal life. A life filled with medical treatments didn't seem normal to Sam, but at least she was alive. He listened carefully as the doctor outlined the details of Dunya's long-term care, but then the doctor told him the most terrifying part, the cost. I work in a tavern on the beach, doc. How can I afford this? I'm sorry, sir, but I can't answer that, the doctor replied. A few days later, Sam brought Dunya home from the hospital. She was weak and needed to rest often, but happy to be home. Sam made her favorite meal for dinner that night, then read her her favorite bedtime story. When Dunya was asleep, Sam stroked his fingers through her soft hair and wept. The situation was impossible and it killed him that most of the problems he faced were now his fault. 
Cuban residents received free health care, but since he was in the country illegally and had no paperwork for Dunya, he was screwed. I'll have to get a second job, Sam muttered. Maybe Jorge knows someone who can help. Sam tiptoed outside so he wouldn't wake Dunya and phone his friend. After a short conversation, Jorge promised he'd asked around and for a second job for Sam. When Sam reported for his shift the following day, Jorge was waiting with a smile. I have good news, my friend, Jorge said. Someone I know is interested in hiring you. Sam wore his best clothes to meet Jorge's friend a week later. The interview went well and Sam returned home with a second job and new hope for the future. It all came crashing down when he spotted a familiar woman outside his home, a woman who bore a striking resemblance to Dunya. You, I know you, you're… Sam broke into a run. Alyssa, Dunya's mother, the woman lifted her chin. I've come to fetch my daughter. Sam stared at the woman in shock. It felt like forever wrapped himself into a single moment as he tried to process what she just said. Sam erupted in anger when it finally sank in that she intended to take his daughter. You're crazy, he shouted. Do you think you can just abandon your child and come back here five years later and take her away from me? I had no choice. I couldn't take care of her then, but I can now, Alyssa jabbed her finger at hand. And you have no right to keep her away from me. You have no right to return here and pretend like you care. Sam grabbed Alyssa's arms and marched her away from his home. Alyssa left that day, but it soon became apparent she hadn't given up. Sam received a summons to appear in court soon afterward. He spent hours pacing his sitting room with a summons in his hand and thinking of ways to escape his situation. The following day, he discussed the matter with Jorge and asked if he knew someone who could help him and Dunya disappear. Jorge put his hands on Sam's shoulders. I've been happy to help you all these years and I truly consider you a friend, but I think it's time you stop running from your problems. It was hard for you when Dunya came into your life so suddenly. You made mistakes because you weren't thinking clearly, but this is your chance to do things the right way. Sam sighed. But I'm scared, Jorge. What if I lose and Alyssa takes Dunya away? Any court will see that you've done everything possible to raise Dunya well, Sam. Why are you scared to face up against a woman who abandoned this child when you've been such a good father? Sam smiled. You're right, and once I'm awarded custody of Dunya, Alyssa will have to give me her documents. A wave of happiness filled Sam's heart. She'll be able to get free medical treatments then. Jorge smiled. See, this is a blessing, Sam. Sam walked into the courtroom full of confidence, but Alyssa's lawyer quickly ripped it to shreds. Sam tried to remain stoic as the lawyer described his past as a womanizing tourist and told the court Sam had stayed in the country illegally for the last few years. The lawyer even presented a police report for the time when he tried to buy Dunya a plane ticket to the US, but the worst was yet to come. How do you even know this is your child? The lawyer asked Sam. Did you have a DNA test done? Sam gaped at the lawyer. A DNA test? Somehow it had never occurred to him Dunya might not be his child. Once he accepted responsibility for her, all doubt he'd previously had evaporated. Sam shook his head. The judge immediately ordered a DNA test. When the session convened a few days later, the judge announced that Sam was not Dunya's father. Sam stared at the judge, his mind blank as a wave of disbelief swept over him. Then he leapt from his seat. But I raised her! Sam's lawyer had grabbed him and he struggled to break free. I've done everything for her these past five years and they've been the best years of my life. She's my daughter because I love her no matter what your DNA test says. The law doesn't work that way, sir, the judge tapped her gavel. I hereby award custody of the child to her mother. You, sir, will be arrested awaiting deportation. No, please, Sam cried. Let me just see her one more time. The judge agreed to let Sam say goodbye to Dunya. A police officer escorted him to the room where Dunya had been waiting with a court-appointed childminder. When Dunya found out she would be living with her mother, she burst into tears and went straight to Sam. Don't leave me, Papa, Dunya cried. Sam lifted the little girl into his arms and held her close. I love you, my sweet Dunya, and I don't want to live without you in my life, he whispered. Alyssa stepped forward to take Dunya. The girl started crying, but soon her tears turned into breathless rasps. She stared into Sam's eyes as she fought to breathe. Stop, she can't breathe, Sam screamed. Alyssa released her hold on Dunya and Sam wrapped the girl in his arms. Tears rolled down his cheeks as he tried to help her. He heard someone calling for an ambulance as Dunya reached up and put her hand on his cheek. Papa's here, sweetheart, Sam whispered. He looked up at Alyssa and said, please don't do this. Don't take her away from me. Alyssa realized how much Sam loved her daughter. She was also touched by the suffering of her daughter and decided not to separate her from Sam. However, she helped Sam cover all of Dunya's treatments. Sam proved that it takes more than blood ties to be a good parent.